Copycat marketing is a form of duplicating a popular product into another product. The imitation can be quite noticeable at times, but concepts and ideas of products can also be copied. And while most copycat brands exist is to lead off of the popularity of the brand they copied from, it can also just be a stupid f idea. In 2015, Amazon released the Amazon Echo, or better known as Alexa. It was really popular among internet savvy people. So a year later, Google released the Google Home, now known as Google Nest. Tell me, which one have you heard of before? Cause I swear to god if you thought that a Google Nest thingy existed before you watched this video, I think you are lying. As the 2020s rolled by, more people started using the internet now because they had no other options. And people then got into stuff like online selling and online purchasing of products and goods, which did generate a ton of sales and money. And among the best group of people that can advertise a product to millions of people are influencers, YouTubers, whatever. Sponsorships and endorsements have been a thing in YouTube with some degree of controversy. But it was a good way for YouTubers to support themselves with just giving away one minute of their video to a company that is willing to give them money. Back then in YouTube, the only products that YouTubers would sell was merchandise connected to their brand, clothing, figurines, or anything really. And some of this merchandise was a bit questionable in time in terms of quality and value. It is mostly for hardcore audiences of these YouTubers and did like the product. Still, they were pretty basic yet expensive or literally ripped off from another design. But at the end of the day, there aren't really a lot of major issues about selling clothes. Just make sure that it's at least worthwhile and not try to resell cheap clothing for ridiculous amounts of prices. But YouTubers started becoming more ambitious, trying to create a brand larger than their own and cater to a wider audience. I'm talking about food. Pokimane is a Twitch streamer that is known to play games and other stuff, I don't know. In 2022, she and a guy named Darcy Mackin founded Mina Snacks, a healthy alternative to snacks. The product they released to kickstart this company was the Midnight Cookies, advertised as healthy and better. And then it was just repackaged cookies. It was just cheap mass manufactured cookies that were then delivered to the company and branded as Midnight Cookies, and then selling them for a ridiculous price. What was her response to these accusations? Yeah, I just broke. We're gonna expect more of this kind of reaction from YouTubers and their products being called out because the truth hurts businesses more than online backlash. I've been in this career and industry for so long that I had so many opportunities to do cash grabs and I never ever did that. I tried to be very considerate of my audience. In 2022, Eric released a product named the Pizza Fire. It's advertised as a sauce that can make anything taste like pizza. And do you know what pizza tastes like? Fucking tomatoes! Yeah, Pizza Fire is basically just a seasoned tomato sauce in a bottle for 25 bucks. Eric is known for being a sort of pizza lover, so it does make sense on why he decided to go on this route. But like, just make your own pizza store. I mean, David Dobrik did this idea too. It isn't the best pizza, but it was still worthwhile. But um, no, no, just mix tomato sauce with spices that probably only cost like 3 bucks to buy and boom, pizza fi. This is what is known as a placebo brand. It tells first what you would taste from this product, which makes you think that it would taste like pizza because the ingredients in it would be featured in an actual pizza. But 25 bucks for that stuff is just crazy. In 2022, a cooking TikToker named Seth P released her new product called the Pink Sauce, described as being a sweet ranch dressing. But throughout the existence of this Pink Sauce, it was inconsistent with its ingredients to the point where the government considered the product as being harmful. A year later, Pink Sauce was able to be sold in Walmart stores all throughout the country. But just a couple of months later, Chef P faced financial issues which was getting her close to being homeless. Nowadays, she still promotes the pink sauce but it's obviously not as popular as it was when it was trending. But at some point, why would you sell a sauce that looks like medicine? Pink isn't a very popular color in the food industry, even less popular in condiments. To me, this was a really poor idea that was luckily executed because of its controversy more than what the sauce did positively to the consumers. One of the main reasons why I made this video was because of these three YouTubers, KSI, Logan Paul, and Mr. Beast. Let's do this in chronological order. In 2022, Prime was released by KSI and Logan Paul as an energy drink that was refreshing, 
healthy and, I don't know, good tasting. But this claim of healthiness was often questioned due to its high amount of caffeine or unnatural sweetness. In the same year, Mr. Beast launched his new chocolate bar called the Feastable Chocolate Bar, which was advertised as being a healthy alternative to Hershey's, which was too questioned. In 2024, KSI Logan Paul and Mr. Beast would collaborate to launch the new product, Launchly, a direct imitation of Launchables, which this announcement was met with controversy. Right after the post was released announcing the product, Dan TDM, a popular Minecraft YouTuber, tweeted out about the current state of, micro of YouTube merchandise and how they are selling unhealthy products to their young audiences. To be honest, Launchly and Launchables are both unhealthy products. Launchly just has slightly less sugar and a fuck ton more electrolytes because comparing an energy drink with a fucking juice box is somewhat fair. KSI responded by making fun of Dan TDM's product, which was either collaborations and not his direct manufacturing, or were just not food. KSI then followed up his response by pointing out that Dan TDM was sponsored by an advertised unhealthy products, which was a one-time thing, old video of his, and was in his chicken channel, which majority of his fanbase even follow. And the fact that KSI spent hours searching just to back up his argument that TDM is some sort of hypocrite. Yeah dude, a guy that was trying to make money off of YouTube when it was just possible to even do so. And a guy that, that is a parent of two children are the same person. Logan also responded to him by claiming that they built their careers and want to make businesses and that Launchables was banned for containing lead, while Launchly doesn't. First thing, you scam kids for a living. Second, Prime, which is a drink contained in Launchly, was found containing lead. Mr. Beast also responded by saying that they were trying to make a healthy alternative to Launchables. Bullshit. What they're doing is trying to list off of a popular brand and resell the same shit just with the idea that they are trying to replace the brand. But for the majority of other creators and people, they do agree with Dan's thoughts of the product. The first reason why Launchly is just a terrible idea is that it's just a copied Launchables but advertised as being slightly healthy. Just because something is slightly healthy by comparison doesn't mean it is healthy. And if you truly want a healthy option for a free built meal, Use actual fucking healthy meals instead of trying to copy a popular brand. It's just a fairly concerning type of marketing where instead of two companies going at each other, trying to be better based on their features or improvements, now it's just a whole I'm better stick without providing anything meaningful, which is just a really pointless and unreasonable way of business. The second reason is that it's just not healthy. This is a reason why a lot of people hate Launchly, but to me, I just don't really care. But it does get a bit understandable when you factor in the impressionable audiences these creators have. YouTube 101 Kids see YouTubers as cool people. They will listen to them, they will do anything for them. They see a product they sell, it doesn't matter if it's a zen or hard fucking heroin, they'll still ask their parents to buy it for them. Because kids just don't understand if a product is good for them or not. And if a positive figure in their life comes in and says that they made something, they'll connect that positive figure to that thing and then conclude that it is something positive. I won't lie that Launchables is pretty prevalent among children as it is a cheap meal for most people to afford, but if they truly want an actual healthy option for a quick meal, then make something healthy and not make a fucking launchable copycat. I can understand that creating an innovative product can be difficult. You can create an idea and find out that it was already made. But just directly stealing ideas from other brands and reformatting as some sort of noble cause while doing it half assly is just dumb. At the end of the day, while 2024 is known as the year of many people being exposed as being dangerous to kids, it still hasn't reached another prevalent danger to kids. Exploitative money milkers. People that just do not care about their buyers and just want as much money as possible. They know that any sort of attention towards their product is good attention, because people will buy their product out of curiosity and then when it gets to physical stores, people will buy it either because they thought it was launchables or they think it's more healthy but in reality, it's just a couple of money hunking fox that steal ideas.